Alright guys, so what I'm holding here in front of me is the core structure of a V-Cube 6. If you have seen my review on the V-Cube 6 and 7, and I do recommend that you watch it if you plan on buying a V-Cube 6 or 7, then you'll know that the centerpieces on the V-Cube 6 do tend to pop out when you are speed solving. So basically, that just happened to me before, and uh, a bunch of pieces popped out. So I, in, I dismantled the entire cube to take a look at the internal structure and to learn how to put it back together, but also because you can't just start putting pieces back um, without knowing where they go, because at the end, when you solve it, it will basically be insolvable, and you'll have to take it apart anyway. So as you can see, the core structure is not unlike the core structure of a regular uh, Rubik's Cube 3x3. You can see that it has an axis piece, and attached to this axis piece are six center supports. You'll also see that there is some sort of spherical support that goes around between these, um, these center supports. So the V-Cube 6 is basically composed, here we have 48 edge pieces, and that's basically four, um, you can call them, I don't know, you can call them quadruplets, but that's 48 edge pieces total. That's 12 sets of edge pieces. You'll also have these, uh, what I call wedge pieces, that basically go in between these center supports. So there are 12 of those in total. I have 8 here, and the other 4 are in here. In between those wedge pieces and the center supports go what I like to, uh, these pieces go in between them. They're what I like to call clamp pieces or interlocking pieces. And there are basically um, 48 of those. There's 24 sets of them. Um, you also have, of course, 8 corner pieces on any cube, no matter how big it is. And then the center pieces, which basically are the majority of the cube. There are 96 of them in total. So there's 16 pieces per center, and there are 6 centers. So if you take a look at the math, we have 12 wedge pieces, 48 edge pieces, 12 times 4. We have 8 corners, 96 center pieces, 16 times 6. And you also have 48 of the clamp or interlocking pieces. You have 2 times 24, which makes 48. Um, so if you add this up, you're going to get 212 pieces in total. So the entire V-Cube is 212 pieces. The V-Cube 6 is 212. I can only imagine how many pieces the, the V-Cube 7 is. I'm not planning on taking that apart anytime soon. Um, I would like to put a video up on how to put your V-Cube 6 back together. However, I believe that it probably would take me a long time, and I don't even know. I'd have to break it into parts. Um, so if you do you know, if you would like some help, I would probably be able to help you. Basically what you want to get is you want to get the core to look something like this. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take the center pieces of any one that you choose. You could basically do any one. Um, but you have to remember to put them back with their proper color pairs. You can't just put them anywhere. Um, so you would basically put the center pieces on and then you're going to put the edge pieces around that the corner pieces and then you're going to build it up it's a little bit complicated but I have figured out how to do it I basically uh, while I was dismantling it you basically just remember where the pieces have to go um, so yeah I really don't know if I'm going to put a video up on how to do that but basically these are the entire pieces these are the set of pieces that compose the V-Cube 6 Alright guys, on second thought, since the cube is already dismantled, I am going to go over the initial steps of how to get your V-Cube 6 reassembled. What you first want to do is to put the pieces into groups or sets, as I have here. You want to group all of the edge pieces together so that there are four of them that match or are complementary to each other. As you can see, there are basically outer edge pieces and there's two inner edge pieces and they all interlock together. So you can basically just set them up like that the wedge pieces, you should have 12 of them. You can group them together. As far as the clamp or interlocking pieces are concerned, there are two different types. There is one that has a bit of a, a lip here, a little ledge, that is longer, and this is a bigger piece than the smaller one, 
which fits into it. And as you can see, it's a little bit smaller and the lip is not as large, the, the overhang. So you want to group those together into sets. You can put all eight corners together. And you can basically just group these center pieces in colors. And the one on the bottom, which I'm going to start uh, with black, you can basically group them uh, so that they are already set up in the positions that they're going to go in. So we have the corner center piece. We have eight edge center pieces. So you can put them like that. We have the middle center pieces. There are four of these. And there's also the four corner center pieces, as I said before. Uh, so you can group those together like that. And then what you want to do is we're going to basically construct this spherical support here. I have three of these already in. I'm going to show you how to put the remaining one in. And you should be able to get the other three. So let's go on to um, explain how to do that. Alright guys, the first thing you want to do is to grab a set of the interlocking clamp pieces. Those are the little T-shaped pieces that I have here. There is a bigger one and there is a smaller one. You're going to take the bigger one and you're going to hold it so that it looks like a chair almost with one ledge facing one direction. You're then going to take the smaller one and hold the ledge facing the same direction and sit it on top of it like that. You'll notice that the smaller piece has a sort of notch on front. What you're then going to do is you're going to hold these two together. They do not lock together, so you're going to have to hold them. You're going to take the core and you're going to basically just rest it so that that notch fits into the little groove here on the center support. What you're then going to do is you're going to take a wedge piece and you're going to slide it in like that, basically. So we're going to have to basically put it in like this, and you're going to want to snap it in. Sort of like you do with the edge pieces of a 3x3. Three three. Okay, so now that is snapped in, as you can see. What you then want to do is to grab another set of the interlocking pieces. So you're going to take the big one and put the small one on top of it so that the ledges are facing the same direction. You're going to hold it then. What you're then going to do is there is another groove here and there is a groove here that fits into that little groove. So you're going to basically, you want to hold the ledges facing this way, inwards. And then you're basically just going to put it in like that. and you're going to snap it so that you basically have the pieces here, here, and the wedge in the middle. So that's basically how to construct the core. It should be pretty, pretty tight. It shouldn't come apart. So you want to have one, two, three, four sets of those. 